Pulse City Network back here at the winter meetings here in San Diego. My name is Jesse Friedman from PHNX, joined here by Patrick Lyons of the NBR Rockies, as well as Ryan Herrera of CHGO Cubs. Patrick, start with you here. Uh, we're here to talk about some potential trade action for the Colorado Rockies this offseason. Uh, I know you have a few different names in mind as potential trade targets for them. One of them, a uh, name I'm particularly familiar with, and Jake McCarthy of the Diamondbacks. Uh, tell us tell us what you got here. What you thinking, Patrick? Uh, but, uh, bag of balls. That's it. Bucket of balls. Bucket of balls. Some bats. Yeah, yeah, why not? That's I mean, move. again, isn't that typical You know, for the Rockies? And, <laughs> Ryan, you wouldn't know about this for the Cubs, but teams from the coast they love to just say so here's a guy from the rockies uh we're gonna acquire and, and we're gonna throw you you know these bones here uh, <laughs> even even when the rockies had back-to-back postseason appearances yep. in 17 and 18 that's just kind of how it works but no uh you know we've been talking about it uh on on phnx sports uh for the last couple of days this idea that diamondbacks have four outfielders you wrote about it uh, quite eloquently and so they've they've got some room there rockies are looking for a left-handed outfielder that can get on base has a little bit of power sounds a lot like jake mccarthy it does you have a hole at third base so one of the deals i think that would make a little bit of sense is el Hiris montero for jake mccarthy maybe each side needs to feel like they need to get a little bit more i think i think maybe the diamondbacks might feel that they need to get a little bit more rockies could throw in a, a, a prospect like a yankee el fernandez and you know what? The Diamondbacks, you can go ahead and, and include Nick Ahmed. He's got one year left, so the Rockies are essentially okay. eating that contract. E- eating some money. Throw, okay. a couple, throw, throw a couple million bucks the Rockies way. <laughs> and we'll also take Mark Melanson off your hands, who hasn't really worked out for the Diamondbacks. He's a golden uh-huh. Colorado native, and Rockies need some veteran pitchers. Uh, again, it's only a one-year deal, so uh, it's not necessarily like the Rockies are, are, are trying to contend for this year. But you know what? It does flesh out their bullpen a little bit. Gives him that that center field left handed hitting bat. Yeah. You got your third baseman of the future, in addition to another prospect as well. How does that? How does something like that feel for you? I don't know if the Diamondbacks would be interested in like like if they're if they're going to trade a Jake McCarthy in order to get the deal to work. I doubt that. I doubt that they're going to want one of the major things coming back to them being like just money off of their payroll, like in you know dealing a Nick Ahmed or a Mark Melanson. I think you know if you're going to make the move to deal a Jake McCarthy, I think you're going to want to just get as much like, you know, major league ready value as you possibly can. Um, so I'd be kind of surprised if they made a move like that and and kind of tied McCarthy to like a Melanson and a Nick Ahmed. Um, Montero's interesting. He's yeah. 23 years old, I want to say. So he broke into the league at a really young age. He's already, already had some major league experience. Um, I didn't watch him as much as you did this last year. I think uh, the strikeout numbers are, are a little scary early on. It seems like he struck out kind of a lot, and he and he really never walked almost. Do we, uh, we care about strikeouts in 2022, 2023 <laughs> anymore? I think that I mean the Diamondbacks just um, just moved on from from Stone Garrett, uh, a guy who put up really good numbers, but his strikeout rate was kind of high. His walk rate was right. was a little bit low. So um, not to say that that necessarily takes Montero out of the running, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting setup like the, this general structure of a deal where the Diamondbacks trade a McCarthy for a young third baseman has a have, makes a lot of sense. It's just a matter of kind of how the Diamondbacks feel about Montero and how confident they are in his future. On the on the Rocky side, say again, Jake McCarthy comes in as one of those outfielders. How important at Coors is is you know defensive ability in the outfield for it? because he, yeah, he played all over yeah, the field, right. all over the outfield this season and looking at the, you know the numbers. Uh, both left and right field, negative one defensive run save. Yeah, I mean it's not bad because you know it's, just, it's right there, roughly it's about average. average. Um, yeah. but it's a little, little slightly negative. Um, he did have a defensive run saved in center field, but that's where he uh, played. I think the least amount of his innings. Sure. Um, in the outfield this season. So how important is bringing if you're bringing an outfielder back? Is that defensive ability in the outfield at course field? I mean, defensively, that that is incredibly key. Uh, there's folks even out there that that almost want to treat center field like uh, you know a lot of teams did in the 1980s with their shortstop play. Just play great defense. It doesn't matter if you get close to 200. Like Just <laughs> be able to track balls down in center field, and I think there would be a lot of value of that. Again, that remains to be seen if McCarthy is that guy, especially because he's, he's, he's checking fast. off the other box. I mean, he, he's, yeah. a, he's a 98th percentile sprint speed guy. Like He's one of the yes. fastest guys in the majors, but – but yeah, it is interesting. Like the defensive metrics haven't really lined up with that yet. Sure. Um, it doesn't seem like he moves quite as well in the outfield as some of the other Diamondbacks outfielders. So I think he'd be solid if you put him in a corner. But 
that is a very large outfield and like in center for, for a guy like Jake McCarthy to manage. So that, that might be a little ambitious. I think you might need younger legs there in center than, uh, than, than a guy in his thirties, like a Kevin Kiermeyer, uh, which that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Targeting youth for that spot is, is probably, yeah. probably a good play. Well, one thing it looks like is, is uh, uh, as far as baseball savant goes outfielder jump, he's in the 15th percentile. Jake yeah. McCarthy. Yeah. That may, that may be the culprit instincts. If, yeah, instincts. Yeah. I think it's a slow first step, but then he's like crazy fast. So he can yeah. sort of make up. For so it. comfortability um, maybe may help with that. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, I don't know how much, I mean, obviously of course field, it has the elements affect the game more than like any other ballpark, but like, especially versus chase field in Arizona, um, that, that may be even a tougher jump to make going from, again, from a, yeah. a, a place with a roof in Arizona to of course field where the balls fly. I'll say this, field. even if he can't play center field and he's not a center fielder in the long run and you know, you put him out in right field and go, well, Zach Veen, that's going to be his spot in right field. I mean, there's still some hope. Maybe you could slide him over to center. You don't worry about that. You you've got, Far too many infielders, corner infielders too. Montero can play a little bit of first base. Walker, I think he only has one year left before he hits free agency. So he has again, a couple, couple years. If, yeah. if uh, Montero doesn't stick there, two more right, uh, he can move over to first base in, in time. That being said, if you can get a guy like Jake McCarthy, you go ahead and do that. And you're, you're not going to be blocking Zach Veen. You know, you can kind of figure that out as it goes along. But Montero, again, one of those guys, you can get, even go back on the DNVR Sports Channel and uh, see some of the discussions we had about whether or not Ryan McMahon or, or Brendan Rodgers could possibly be a trade chip and why that makes sense. But Montero being that guy who's not established like McMahon in Rodgers, could, does this one make sense? The Nationals are not going to be very good this year. In no. fact, I think according to Zips, the Nationals uh, are the only team that is uh, projected to be worse than the, than the Rockies. But if the Nationals can get more money off the books, they get a guy like Montero in exchange for Patrick Corbin, guy you know well, Jesse. Josiah Gray, uh, you know, might not want to give up that kind of a contract, and maybe a couple bucks, maybe not fifty million, like in the Noel Arenado deal. Twenty-five million, you take something like that, yeah. so that the Nationals can take even more money off the books and have a third baseman of the future. Don't know necessarily if the Nationals would be interested in that, but does that seem to make sense if you take the ten thousand foot view in, in MLB? Montero for Patrick Corbin, Josiah Gray, and maybe a couple bucks, and maybe a couple other pieces huh. you need to make have it make sense if that's just the core of the deal with something like that seem to make sense for both sides. I mean, Patrick Corbin had a miserable season, frankly, and he, <laughs> 37 million, right? Over like and, the next. Yeah. And he makes a lot, of makes money. a lot of money. So, um, I'm, I'm honestly kind of surprised to hear you suggest a trade in which the Rockies take on, uh, what might, I mean, I don't know if it's the worst contract in baseball, but it's, it's up, there. up there. I mean, yeah, I don't know if you can put Patrick Corbin in a starting rotation at this point. And the thought of, the thought of him pitching at Coors Field, frankly, is is a, <laughs> I mean, it's a scary thought. Like that, that just might not go very well. Were you, so. were you scared when uh, he was suiting up for the Diamondbacks and starting at at Coors Field? Well, he, he was, was a little a, bit better at that. He time. was a much different pitcher back then. It's true. Depending depending it's on true. the year, he kind of had his ups and downs in Arizona. But yeah, I don't know if the Nationals like necessarily regret this deal on the whole because no. I mean, Patrick Corbin still had some really good years for them, and they won a World Series. And, ring. Um. So I think there's, you know, there's more layers to that, but yeah, I mean, the Patrick Corbin deal is, is in a really tough spot now, yeah. right? Frankly, looking at the deal, I don't know if the Rockies are really getting enough from what you've said uh, to warrant bringing back that monstrosity of a contract. It is, it is kind of jarring to see like how quickly the decline for Patrick Corbin came. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that 2018 season, he was nearly a six war player, according to Fangraphs. Yeah. Like he was. And that was uh, his last year in Arizona. Yeah, he was awesome. Was Even that great. first year in Washington, he was still four four point seven more F four, almost five. Yeah. He was still a very good pitcher. And then he has he got one point two, point two, and then point eight the next three seasons yeah. after. Like it's it's a pretty sharp, sure. quick decline for Patrick Corbin, considering where he was when he signed that contract. That would be why you need to include some money, obviously, to to pay down that deal because there's still a lot left, and why you would probably also need to include another prospect starting pitcher would be great for the Rocky. So that kind of fills out the rest of your rotation. So there, there is some value of having a veteran guy that can eat up innings. Even if his ERA is, is going to be in a low five, that's not the worst thing in the world. Low, I don't know if it's low five. The Colorado field, Rockies. But... <laughs> so that, then the question is this, if, if, if you are backing off of Patrick Corbin as a whole, even regardless of how, how much he's overpaid in that deal, would you rather have Patrick Corbin 
or Steven Strasburg from the Washington Nationals. You're oh, still gosh. getting <laughs> you're still getting a really good young and controllable pitcher in Josiah Gray, and, and some of that deal is going to get paid down. And you only got to give up the one guy. You only got to give up Montero. Strasburg or Patrick Corbin? Patrick Corbin looks a little bit better now, doesn't he? He's at least healthy. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh, gosh. Are those the only two options? Those Strasburg, are your two options. Strasburg. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. Um, I think Strasburg, from just like an injury standpoint, it's just always hard to – I think if, if the Rockies have a need to eat up innings, Patrick Corbin is probably a better, a more safe bet to do that, I guess. So I would maybe go that route. That makes sense. Yeah. Corbin? Yeah. It, it's I think so. It just because of, like you said, the injuries, it's it's every year now. It's, it's, I don't know the last year he was like even remotely healthy uh, start off the top of my head, Steven Strasburg. So I think if you're at least want a guy to be able to play for you, Patrick Corbin might be a safer bet. I feel I feel better now. Of, <laughs> you feel better with, with that deal <laughs> and having it makes it made more sense, at least than the Strasburg option. Yeah, I mean, getting Josiah Gray back is that's sort of compelling. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you all for being here with us. We really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you again soon.